Welcome back to Newsday. Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world are our Rise News Analyst Emmanuel Efeni and Daisha Boale. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Thank Cynthia. You. Good afternoon, Vembai. Good afternoon, Dio. Afternoon. Yes, we start. Yes, thank you. We started the review with this day Nigeria's newspaper of record. The lead story: Tinubu will need more functional justice system to protect rights of all citizens. Declares open national summit on justice. Akpabio wants abuse of ex parte order curbed. We owe president for our achievement. Says Ariwola. Yes, yes, the president uh, is addressed to the uh, summit yesterday, the national summit on justice taking place in Abuja. Um, of course, represented by the vice president and stating that we need a functional justice system that will support um, the fast uh, growing economy. And I think it's, that, was, that, that was a very important uh, point to, to be made uh, because you are winning investors to come to Nigeria. There has to be a justice system that can speedily resolve disputes that arise from business relations, business transactions. Uh, and if that is lacking, and you have to wait for so many years to get justice. Of course, investors will be affected, but there is more to the problem within the justice system than just uh, foreign investors who are coming. Delay in justice, in deliver of justice, Dio. Yes, um, we need a just uh, justice system, <laughs> functional but just, and one that delivers justice in time. Yeah, because because have justice, justice delayed, delayed is justice, justice denied. So you the saying goes. Justice is expensive in terms of time and money. Yes. yes. It can be functional, but it should be just as speedy. Yes. That's what we need. Of course, there are other challenges within the justice system. Of course. The, yes. And um, I think the, the chief justice of Nigeria has his work well cut out. Uh, and uh, of course, referencing the fact that under President Bola Metinubu in a short while, mm -hmm. The salaries of judicial officers have been reviewed and they quite were, quite were. significantly. Yeah, they are in the last budget. <laughs> yes, I quite don't know significantly. That, but they see they took care of them. Yes. Because if the judges are well paid, the temptation for you know what will not be there. Well, no matter what they do. Yes. See, I, I was reading something. They say uh, they have some Russian barons. Why are they taking their cases to London? Uh, they said yes. The judges there, they, they, they know they are fair and they have integrity. Yes, of That's course. That's what the judicial system. Yes, is. integrity. Integrity. Uh, the yeah. the judge, like yeah. Caesar's wife, must That's always right. live above board. That's right. It doesn't matter the size mm -hmm. of the salary, so there can be and no excuse Caesar's for that. Caesar's wife must be above reproach. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> above reproach. I, I yes. Like coming from the Senate President about uh, the abuse on ex parte orders. Yes. Because, I mean, lately, not mm -hmm. even lately, they fly around no, back and forth. Fact, you don't know which one is the latest exactly. one, which court yeah. did it come yeah. from. It. You can literally harvest ex parte order. That's what And it's to delay and justice. It, and it can come it's from any part of the country, justice. even when the issue at hand is in another jurisdiction. It so is it's something. The National Judicial Council has to deal with, it. and uh, in such a way that judges will not be given frivolous um, ex parte order, as it were. But another aspect, election cases, is a big challenge, as we saw in the last um, round of election and elect uh, tribunal cases going up to the appeal court and uh, getting some judgments that were, I don't want to say crazy. Remember the Kano judgment exactly. where two, where two, Kano one where two parties were interpreting the uh, the two, judgment two, what do they in call a different way. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I think the the sum, this summit is a welcome development, and I just hope uh, the outcome uh, will deal with some of these challenges because we are good the at holding summits, conferences, talking, talk shops. but we have to walk the talk. Right? Make now, justice affordable and accessible. Yes, and also uh, help to lessen the burden of work on judges. 
by introducing technology, mm. right? Giving them cannot, uh, very good working like environment. Yes. Uh -huh. Now, I'm of course, residence. yes, of course, Daily Trust has that story also on its lead. Corruption, undue influence, undermining our justice system. CJN. Mm -hmm. That's that been blunt. Uh, yes. That's been blunt. Now, if we look at uh, the Business Day newspaper, foreign investors return to Nigerian stocks as inflows quintuple. Quintu. Yes. Five-fold Five increase. Yes. Of course, Nigeria moving from um, a situation a year ago where the investors, as one investor put it, that the CBN reforms, of course, being given the credit for these inflows, uh, Nigerian exits, in, in, the highest inflows in the period under review came uh, in the month of March. Um, of course, when the figure jumped to 52. 0.66 billion uh, naira, exceeding uh, the previous month of 40.71 billion naira. Of course, the CBN reforms has taken Nigeria uh, from uninvestable only a year ago to um, investable uh, this year within a period of um, one year. So. Some uh, cherry news there, Dio. Foreign investors, portfolio investors coming back to the stock exchange market, and uh, of course. Uh, Are they only foreign investors? There's a lot of uh, uh, billions of naira out there. Yes. You get me? No, but we need Outside the foreign the investors. Systems, we need the inflow. So that's an opportunity. The opportunity is in the stock exchange. Of course. Uh -huh. To download, offload, excess profit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the Guardian newspaper, Dio. I think this is a worrisome trend. Federal government's non-retention policy. Over 5,032 first-class graduates languish amid vacancies in varsity. Back in the day, Dio, when mm -hmm. somebody comes out with first class, the yeah. university will even be reluctant to allow him to go. You can't go. But go that opinion. is not the case anymore. According to this report, and a very good uh, research done by the Guardian newspaper there, Eight top federal universities retain no best student in three years. That is scandalous. That's concerning. <laughs> it's scandalous. That's concerning. So where um, are the academics, the researchers, the professors? Where, where, look, how, look, are we, how are we investing? You have to them? invest. Look at, in look at the other side. Maybe they don't want to stay. No. Maybe the university system. Yeah. Well, if you want, want to retain them yeah. for postgraduate, I mean, but yeah. 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 if they don't they want to stay, graduate assistant, people like meet, Shell are yeah. out there. Yeah, they're looking, looking for, for them. Of course. <laughs> Globally, yes. postgraduates are uh, so. Not all of them go know. for uh, PhDs. Yes. Brilliant yep. people. Fellowships they are internationally. Mm. Maybe, uh, yes. But there's a lot of vacancies in the university system right now. Yeah, well, that, uh, Unmet vacancies of lecturers. Unilori, 500. Guzo, 600. Funa, that's Federal University of Agriculture, Abelkuta, 350 plus. Over 1,000 vacancies in University of Ibadan, University of Lagos, uh, your alma mater, OAU, UNN, and the Unilag. Great Ife. Yes. Not Unilag, what do you mean? No. <laughs> oh, I said you're in OAU, now oh, OAU. I, thought you were uh, Unilag. I know where you attended. In one remote village in the Ife. Back in the day. The Great Ife. The Great Ife. Yes, the Great Ife. Okay. Oh, yeah. But it's now about family and all of our universities. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, but it's a worrisome trend. And I but just, you see, I was going to talk about. You see, some people, the university system. It's not attractive to exactly. I, yes. that's, and then don't forget those people not in uh, federal universities. They are in the private universities. Mm -hmm. Well paid, three times they are in pri private in Nigeria. I just imagine yes. being a graduate at this. We have over ninety-one universities now. Looking at the realities on ground, yeah. would I want to set myself up for stay. that? I'd want to go for something that's yeah. more well, um, secure. To, well, I think it's, it's, a, it's also a challenge for the Minister of Education sure. uh, because. Uh, you must make the university system attractive to the best, the best yeah, what brands of all around. The absolute strikes and all yeah, that. that. That is that's part of part the challenge. Of, that's what that I'm saying. Part of what the, have, the education minister say. was until recently vice chancellor of a private university. So you should be able to ensure that the public university system, yes, um, is just 
right where it ought to be. It's only to provide uh, infrastructure. Yes. And I think the other thing of being an academic down. at that level is that you really invested in meaningful research. Yeah. So you now mm -hmm. ask yourself, how many of these institutions are securing funding, financing for meaningful research? Right. Yeah. It's, uh, okay, let's just tricky. look at the, the there are challenges for those people. That's yeah. why they are not staying. Okay, let's look at the Vanguard newspaper just mm -hmm. before we move to the foreign newspapers quickly. Now, why power sector crisis won't end soon by electricity workers. Says frequent system collapse caused by technical other factors. Jenkos are saying gas shortages, aging dilapidated machinery, inadequate power evacuation capacity. While the discos are saying uh, outdated obsolete networks, inadequate maintenance of network equipment, low meter penetration poor supply becoming unbearable of course there's another story just below that okwama ew over 12 residents trapped in forest die of hunger sickness including snake bites that's what uh, before uh, the on the power issue yes uh, i think we discussed it yesterday yes and uh, sorry Ondo. just to add mm -hmm. governor oberwari has inaugurated a committee to resettle rehabilitate the villagers the innocent people who have been suffering in the forest so mm -hmm. kudos and i just hope that assignment will be dealt with uh, with uh, abraham obodo a malabite <laughs> and uh -huh. a niger delta uh, leader of thoughts, heading that chairman. Yes, uh, <laughs> the, those who are privileged. It's, it's a bias. Those who are privileged. <laughs> I'm so, no, I'm ignorant. No, no. I, that's, <laughs> I'm that. that's why I'm giving you the explanation. Those who are privileged to mm. attend university at the, in the great city of Calabar, the first capital of Nigeria, where yeah. the great Namda Zikiwe attended Hope College for his secondary on that education. Malabai, <laughs> no. We'd like to thank you both for your analysis. <laughs> I don't know how <laughs> your malabitism <laughs> is helping us in the story, but thank you, gentlemen, for your review. Mr. Emmanuel Feni, Mr. Daesh thank you both.